and that was settled pretty quickly. But then came the question, well, how do I do actually the legs? How do I do the connection? This is also in cooperation with Zauder Woodworking, which is a local furniture uh, maker down in Ohio. They really try to focus on ready to assemble furniture, so which is something my students uh, try to focus on. That means uh, ready to assemble, trying to have some sort of connection system that uh, is very easy to put together and also maybe can be taken apart again. In my case, I really wanted to push also more interesting joinery, which are not metal-based, but plastic-based. And those I could easily 3D print. So as you see, I started some sketches. Um, do, for example, all boards have to be joined and touch each other, or can I put in small spacers made out of 3D printed plastic, just as a visual uh, detail? Or this is a leg, as you can see, it's at an angle. Um, so it's a dowel and then I have screws in between, but I, everything is kind of like at an angle. So I, I try to think about, I need to, need to create a fixture. So when I start uh, drilling all these holes to put the screws in, they all have to line up. And I quickly forgot about this idea because I don't have that type of a system inside uh, the woodshop at work. Maybe, a bracket that goes around the dowel and the, the plywood plank, which I could 3D print, well, it looks kind of boring. So then I came up with the idea of, well, what about I just 3D print a socket and I somewhat attach the dowel to it? Do I create kind of like a socket where the dowel goes in, like here? Or there so that would be very easy to 3d print and then we could drill it against the bottom part and because of this cavity or opening it's also very easy to insert the dowel into there but kind of like this looked a little bit brutish and I really started to like this idea of the wooden part fluidly flowing into the 3D printer top part. So that's the kind of like the one I, I settled for. And I will just only quickly talk a little bit about those for a moment and then I will alternate just to give you a good understanding and overview about how much information I try to write down uh, throughout this process. Because you might have an idea and then you start executing the idea and you start realizing it's maybe a little bit too complicated or you come up with a better idea. So I created, as you can see in the screenshot, already a basic 3D model for this whole construction. The front parts are mitered, also the sides are mitered, but I need to figure out how I'm going to secure this uh, board that is actually or the shelf that's in the center. So with a table saw I could easily cut the slots um, as you can see in the, the line drawing in the center and then this center board will be a little bit wider and go right into these slots. But then I have to do this task and actually with the brackets as you can see here that was a little bit easier and quicker to do. Also another ideation, do I go maybe with a butt joint? So you see that I have my planks go this way and then go this way instead of being mitered, 45 degree. And into these corners I put in kind of like representations for where I would like to have the brackets. And I went to the hardware store and sourced uh, various options of brackets and they have different sizes, strength, material finishes. Those actually were not very expensive, kind of like three dollars that uh, corner bracket four times. So we're looking at twelve dollars hardware. That's okay. That's not too bad. Well, what about without these brackets? Because it can look maybe a little bit amateur like two. I create uh, and I try to hide the joinery. 
So these lines in an angle here, they represent these wooden biscuits. And these wooden biscuits, they would sit right in there. And then this would be a wooden dowel, like this. All I need to do is make the holes and put everything in. So kind of like three, three different ways how to put all these parts together. And there you can see more three-dimensional representations of how the slot joinery or, for example, the dowel joinery uh, might look like. Okay, good. Before we now go to, to Shaper, one last session. So you see I focus extensively primarily on, on the top. I still have to do things about the legs. I built the leg as a th basic 3D model and then took a screenshot because it was more a shape study. I still need to figure out how I'm going to build it in real life. The, some parts should be plastic, the rest is wood. At the bottom I would like to have glides. But because the the legs are very angled, I need to kind of get glides that really fit the proportion of the the wooden leg, which was a problem. So I decided, well, I can just 3D print these caps too. So I put down the notes for this glide to get, but at the end then decided for a different uh, path. How could I secure this 3D printed socket to the box. From the top I could drill holes and then create this um, also 3D print holes into the socket and then via screws uh, fasten it all together. Only downside is then you would see also the screws. Which led me to the, this session. So this you see here I went back to Shaper, did a revision. I started splitting actually the lac prototype into the top, the bottom part, which are 3D printed, and then the wooden doll that stays in the center. And I put in representations for where I still might screw elements together and where I simply put wooden, wooden dowels in. So why wooden dowels with 3D printed parts, you might ask. The main reason for that is uh, I could also just uh, 3D print these um, pins, but because of the, the size they have, they might not be very strong, which in, for this prototype, I would actually settle for um, something harder, so wooden dolls. In real life, if this would be a plastic injected uh, injection molded part, that material would be much stronger than the 3D printed part. Also, it would be much more precise than a 3D model. In reality, we could also, to make this really nice and strong, we could have um, a set of uh, nuts, which we would drive into the wooden board and then via threaded rod we could connect all these parts together. That's also how we could could connect the plastic to the wooden leg and the cap to the leg. Yeah, easy, with a screw, not a big deal. And here that's kind of like if we would just do everything via 3D printed parts and we push them together and might glue it together then this might be the configuration I would try to 3D model. And then also from the bottom, just a quick overview of how all that stuff would look like.